Hello and welcome to the Human Echoes Podcast. I'm Tony Southcott. I'm Albert Berg. Coming to you from our Beaver Lodge deep in the hills of California. <laughs> yes, with a special point five episode of the Human Echoes Podcast where we're going to just talk about the brand new hit horror comedy film, Zombievers. Zombievers. By the way, if you heard the concept, if you, if you heard what I just said and you're like, Zombievers. That sounds dumb. <laughs> I, I just you can just turn it off right now. Like that, I there nothing we are going to say is going to make you think. Oh, well, actually, it turns out Zombievers is an incredibly intelligent concept. <laughs> it's it's exactly what you're going to expect. It's the best possible. I don't know about to say best possible, but it's a very good rendering of that really stupid concept. Yeah. But if you're too highbrow for this, you're just not. That, yeah, you're not letting yourself enjoy life if you're too highbrow for Zombievers. Oh, Tony, this is not for everybody, all right? This, I, as much as I enjoyed this film, it is not for everybody. Yeah, maybe. It's for, it, it's for most of my friends. My dad would find something awesome about it. I thought... Like okay, everything, though. I did think, though, because there is a way to go with this film that is not... But it doesn't do justice. There are there are schlocky films and there are bad films, Tony. I, for instance, infinitely prefer this to Sharknado. Yeah. You know, the, the concept of Sharknado is like, oh, great, you have sharks and a tornado. But, like, the parts that aren't the sharks and the tornado <laughs> are a little bit annoying to me. Yeah. Uh, whereas this, especially the first 20 minutes of this movie, are super strong. Because you have these three characters, these three girls going off to this cabin... They, the dialogue is so sharp between them and their personalities like really play well off of each other. And even before you get to any of the zombie stuff, you're just like, I'm enjoying this. Like these people are funny, but believable and interesting and, you know, kind of cute getting in their bikinis, yeah. going in the lake, all that I, stuff. I, no, this, uh, this movie definitely knows. I uh, like to that a, a solid horror movie like this needs a little bit of eye candy to keep it rolling. And it definitely excels at that for pretty much the whole thing. It, yeah, it's not uh, like I said. It's not a. It's not too highbrow for anybody. Yeah, uh, it's it's definitely, <laughs> but it's not so lowest common denominator that it doesn't try. Yeah, I think because there there are so many great performances in this, in this movie. Uh, from a comedy standpoint, the, like I said, the girls are just great. Anytime they're on screen, the hunter dude. I forget what his name was in the it movie. It was uh, Smith with a Y. Yes, I do remember. Okay, now I remember. I don't know how I forgot that. He, expl- he even told you how to but, spell it. Yeah, um, just in case you have to write him a check. He is so just on point. Like, that character feels like a real character and yet is incredibly funny in this context. Yeah. Uh, and and the, the next-door neighbors and their interactions, all that stuff was great. The only complaint I had character-wise was the boyfriends. Yeah, three complaints right there. Oh. And it's <laughs> like they almost... I, I don't want to say they ruined the movie because I really still enjoyed the movie, but they kind of ruined the movie. Like you have everybody else, especially the, the three female leads, whenever they're talking to each other, even when the boyfriends are in the room, when the, the females are interacting, it feels like real and, you know, in this weird sort of crazy universe, but they feel like they're real people with, you know, real problems and real history together and all this stuff. And the boyfriends are just like dumb. Yeah. <laughs> like really dumb and not in like any kind of a funny way to me. I mean, they had some good sort of funny one liners, but it was still underscored by like, well, as the movie went on, they got a little bit more tolerable. Like, but the, the first impressions you have of these guys, they're, they're just like the hardest, like the broiest bros to ever bro. <laughs> yes. Seriously. It's the worst. <laughs> they, they take bro to 11. Yeah. It's too much, bro. <laughs> um, so I, I know was, most I was people disappointed bro, by like, that. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, it, that, like that was the old. That was the only thing that like took me out and had me thinking about it. Like that, we were even just texting back and forth. I was asking you a few questions, and we both hit that same mark. Like yeah. this is a. It, it, they just need a little bit of work. It, it, it just it, you know what? Honestly, those characters didn't even need to be there. Yeah, I can see have had another a version set of, of this movie where kidding. they don't exist. Yeah, you know, you can even have the whole. The sort of romantic subtext with like the, you know, the cheating subplot, all that can, can still be playing out. They can still have the one revelation about who's cheating on who with who. 
without the boyfriends because the yeah. other girl knows. And if you needed to have some fodder, you could just say, oh, these are some other people at another cabin. Because that's, yeah, that's mainly what it's that. like. There's all the people who live around the lake, apparently. I mean, there's only just the one house that you actually see, but still. Yeah, you're um, told that there's other decent folk around there. Yeah. I like how that guy's always talked about, he, like Smith, he's like, there are decent folk around here, you should cover up. But he's also making innuendo every time you turn around. But I felt I like mean, that he's was... literally out there hunting beaver. His hypocrisy, I felt, it still <laughs> felt real. Like, yeah. as annoying as he was as a character, right? Like, you think, okay, well, this guy's kind of a douche. No, I, did, I didn't think he was annoying. I thought he was funny. He was a douche. Well, in the no, okay, but I'm like saying, that. like, if you like met that. him in real life, from their perspective, he's annoying. Yeah. Because he's, like, hitting on them in one breath and telling them to cover up in the next breath. Yeah. And, you know, you get why they're kind of disgusted by him. Like, guy, really, like, we don't want to deal with you right now. <laughs> but as a character in the story, he felt very interesting and fleshed out. And his performances, as I said before, were amazing. When they, that, there was one moment in this movie where he opens a door, sees a lady like trashed by a zombie in the bed, like just, you know, torn up, bloody, all that stuff. And he just does a look. He doesn't even say anything. He just like does this like eyebrows raised thing, shuts the door. And it's one of the funniest moments in the movie. <laughs> like there's an outtake outtake where he says something about, well, that's messed up or whatever. But it, that is, it's as, not nearly was still funny. Like, yeah. It was still less funny than him. Just, Hmm. <laughs> and like leaving. And, like, as far as the three girls, like, there was enough difference in their personality that you could see why they'd be friends, but they were, like, they were truly different. It reminded me, like, a much less serious version of The Descent, where you could have just had that be the main party there. Yeah, it very much so. It could, it could have been that. The other thing that I liked was that all three of them were from, what was it, Tennessee or West Virginia or somebody, something? I think Indiana. Okay, Indiana. Place. Like, but they were all three sort of hicks. You know, which I, a lot of times in a horror movie, you'll have like the one girl who's like the local or the, you know, got the southern accent down, you know? Yeah. But, like, and then the other ones are all, I were preppy. But no, like all three <laughs> of these girls are, you know, playing people who are from this area who kind of know the, you know, lay of the land. And this is not unfamiliar ground to them. They all sort of have this background and this history together that I think really informs their characters and they play it really well. So I like that aspect a lot. The beavers themselves, obviously not transitioning out of characters <laughs> for a second, but they, for a, a silly schlocky concept, the way they executed those was perfect. Pitch perfect for this movie. In my opinion, yeah. I read a review that was very negative on the, how bad the beavers looked. <laughs> I thought it worked. The, it there were only you? two very quick frames where it looked phony because, like, they would move like they're on an RC car rather than like seeing their legs move. But those were like those were so brief that if you weren't paying very close attention, you wouldn't even notice it. Okay, but, so like, I, the, you and I coming from this, I thought they all looked phony, Tony. I thought right, it looked fake they, every single time. I'm just saying, like, some of the scenes looked better than others. Okay. There were some awesome, awesome parts. Like, I loved whatever the, like that beaver was biting the light socket and it set on fire and stuff like that. That was good. I like the idea that that was intentional, too. Yeah. Because like, he starts the house burning. <laughs> they're like some kind of a hive mind, and they're willing to sacrifice themselves to, like, I will set myself on fire to set this other thing on fire to smoke out the bad guys. Well, they, they were definitely slightly more intelligent than you see from zombies. They're more like Romero's Land of the Dead zombies, where they could understand basic things. Let's not compare them to others. I mean, they're <laughs> beavers, Tony. Of course they're more intelligent. Yeah, but I'm saying about stuff later, but we won't get into that. Well, they do, like, even very very early in the movie, you see that they've cut the, the phone lines and stuff. Yeah, uh, very intentionally marked the phone lines and everything. Yeah, and they do that, you, they, it's kind of like, why would they do that? And then later on you realize, oh, because they're not dumb. Yeah. <laughs> like, they, they don't want them to call out is why they did that. Uh, and then they just start blocking roads. Right, yeah, they, they <laughs> chew down the trees to block the roads. I will say that I'll transition from it into that because a lot of those scenes happened at night. And one of my complaints about this movie is that the lighting is not adequate for many of these night scenes. Yeah. For me. Like there are times you just see the glowing eyes of the zombievers in the dark. And I understand what they're going for there, but it, it just, it's just dark. I just, I'm yeah. just sitting there like, I can't see anything. I kind of see some glowing, but 
It's Sometimes that doesn't bother me as much because there's so many movies where it's like, yeah, you can tell there's like a spotlight on them in the dark. That's because it's a movie, Tony. <laughs> You're supposed to be able to see stuff. Yeah, but if the character can't see, I shouldn't be able to see. No, no, that's 100% not true. I should be able to see everything. <laughs> I I don't I, I don't, don't die with see that. Something creeping through the hallway. I just like the isolation of like horror whenever it goes fully dark. I guess I like, I want to be able to see what's supposed to be happening on screen. And there were some times where I felt like I couldn't, especially yeah. when they're outside of the truck and like looking at the tree. And a couple of times when they're running for the house, I I like I could kind of see the characters and stuff, but it just felt poorly lit. And yeah, I'm complaining might, about it, Tony. I, I have a right to complain. I'm a reviewer <laughs> on this show too. Darn it. I wasn't saying it was that bad. I was just saying, like, I like the way Banshee Chapter and movies like that do it where it's intentional. This is not Banshee Chapter. I know. It's not this scary. This is not on that level. There was never a point where I was freaked out in this movie. There was a point where I was like, oh, that's gruesome and, and various other things during some transformations. But I don't think I could ever say that I was, like, scared at any point of this movie. It's like Tucker and Dale in that sense. It's just not going to It's not gonna freak you out. No, it's not horror in any, like, true sense. Yeah, but it does, you know, it, there are some elements that feel like they could be horror if they were played a little different. The moment, the, the part where they're on the raft in the middle of the lake. Yeah, there is a Stephen King story called The Raft that that reminded me of a lot. And I'm I don't know if they read that story or not when they wrote this, but it felt very, very much like an homage to The Raft when they're on that scene, because it's about a group of friends like I think you know, two or three guys and a couple of girls and stuff, and they go and they swim out on this raft in this lake, and this thing attacks them. It's like a an oil slick ooze blob that can come up through the floorboards and, like, grab your leg and suck it down, like, through these tiny, tiny cracks and just suck the skin off of you. And Anyway, so it th- that is the whole story of the raft, and it could have played out a lot longer than it did in this movie, but I thought that was a really interesting kind of premise that you're stuck in the middle of this lake within eye eyesight of the shore you can see safety but you can't get there because of all the zombies in the water i think one of the only smart things the guys did was actually something on the raft to cause a distraction (laughs) yeah yeah i had i had a flashback to uh sorry (laughs) it's gonna cause some some turmoil and issues i I had a flashback to be very um, offended to bait on that one <laughs> you remember bait when the girls Heck like yeah the, the one in the uh the grocery store yes where the girl's like you're a dog murderer a dog murderer is worse than a person murderer <laughs> it's my sister and my mom most of the women i know well to be fair like in a movie even like you watch people die all the time watching the dog die is no fun uh no. which the dog dies spoilers guys that's like I think they even show that in the in the trailer though. They like, show a lot of spoilery stuff in the trailer. The ending of this movie gets very weird and in a way that I don't want to go into a hundred percent, but if you watch the trailer it basically gives away some of it where the you know, I mean they are zombies and they are beavers and biting people turns into them into zombies, but it works differently in this movie than a normal zombie movie. Uh so I thought that was very the direction they went with that, especially with the after the credit scene was really interesting, and it makes me yeah. want to see a sequel now. Yeah. I want to see Zombievers 2. I don't know if it'll be called Zombievers 2, but that's all we can say about the, the after the credits thing. No, it's still Zombievers. Yeah. It's, it's still, it's just other types of Zombievers. Anyway. They showed so much in the trailer, but that's also part of the reason why it went viral, because when they put this out, like, it got more than a million views in the first day on the trailer. And I'm wondering if for uh, for indie movies like this, where it's kind of silly and everything, it, it doesn't really diminish the film to show those sorts of things, or at least it didn't for me. I've seen that trailer two or three times. Right. So do you think that it's a better move to just like show people the exact ride they're in for whenever you've got an indie film that, like this, or do you think it's better to kind of keep it a little closer to the chest? Well, you know how I feel about spoilers, Tony. I'm not a big like anti-spoilers guy. I, there are some things I'd like to keep a surprise. But in this particular case, I think showing what they show in the trailer is a good move because it made you it makes you want to watch the movie. It, it, it does. It may you know whether or not it spoils something. That's the tra- you know what people who make trailers don't care if you get the moils the the moils movie the movie spoiled for you. They yeah. don't care. They care if you go and buy a ticket 
or buy a VOD thing on Amazon and watch it. That's yeah. what they care about. And this trailer gets you to want to watch this movie. Yeah, so I did. definitely did. It got my five that. bucks. In this particular case, too, I thought that, uh, you know, with this type of movie, it's not such a big deal. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's not like, I, I don't know. It doesn't turn into something completely different. It's, it's keeping with the tone of what you're already dealing with. So. Yeah, it's, it's not giving away the end of the sixth sense or something like that. Right, yeah. It's, it's a silly movie with, you know, silly, a silly premise. And they take that premise pretty far, and they show some of that in the trailer, and I'm fine with that. So. Yeah. I suppose the uh, last thing I want to do is uh, give a shout out by name to the the three actresses that were awesome in this. They aren't uh, they aren't as well known, even though they all have cool projects coming out. Uh, Courtney Palm, uh, who I talked to a little bit on Twitter earlier today, uh, Rachel Melvin, and Lexi Atkins. They're all they were all really good in this, and you guys should check them out on IMDb. See what other projects they're working on. Yes. Also, the brief appearance by Bill Burr was pretty yeah, hilarious. Yeah, like that. It's kind of a yeah. I, I was about to give a spoiler, but yeah, that was uh, it was just cool seeing him. And he talked about doing that scene on his podcast about how much fun it was. And it's definitely an absurd conversation. I'm not sure who the trucker was. I thought that might have been the director, but it was it was just a it was hilarious. It was I love awesome. the conversation they had about the friends <laughs> like, my, like I'm not allowed to go take a dump at my friend's house anymore. He's like, what are you talking about, man? Like you go in the bathroom like that's what it's for. It doesn't matter if you sneak it up in there. They have a whole room for it. It's like you go on the kitchen table or whatever. And he's like, actually, I went on the kitchen table. <laughs> and then like Bill Burr doesn't even like say anything. He just goes on to the next conversation. Uh, that was a great scene. Uh, yeah. And I think I have a feeling that like they shot an hour of those two guys just going back and forth. <laughs> That's pretty much what he said they did, like, because they're, they're both, like, they're both funny guys, so I'm sure they were just, they had probably had the script, and then they were just going back and forth, riffing on it, and just seeing what would happen. Like, Bill Burr does an hour and a half every week just talking to himself, so he's pretty good at that. I would imagine, yeah, well, he's, he's, good, he's funny in this. The other, I assume he's a comedian. The guy who played the hunter looked very familiar to me. He's been in, like, hundreds of shows. Like, I looked him up I, earlier. I'm, okay. I actually have it open right now, so I'll get his name. But he has been in a ton of different stuff. His name is Rex Lynn. Okay. He's been in like stuff all the way from Cliffhanger, Django Unchained, a bunch of episodes of like CSI, like pretty much doing that circuit of the character actor, like where you go to every CSI style show, like all of that. He's in so many different movies though. He's got eighty six film credits. Oh, he so. nailed it in this. You can tell he's getting work because he's working hard and doing good stuff. Yeah, so, so I was... Rex Lynn, you did a great job. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> uh go out if if you are intrigued at all by this concept try to like kind of squint your eyes when the boyfriends are on screen because they're annoying but yeah. uh other than that you should really really like this film this sounds like it's even remotely possibly up your alley i think you should check it out yeah it'd be it's a good movie to throw on like at a party with a bunch of friends to just make fun of it the whole time it's very and much it's something worth that the would be five bucks on amazon people. sorry say that again i said it's very much something that's better to watch with other people Oh yeah, and I just think it's it's like five bucks on Amazon. Like uh, if you're lucky enough to have it in a theater, like maybe show the support that way. But I, I definitely enjoyed watching a VOD. So, I think so anyway, that's, that's going to be it for our review of Zombievers. We're going to continue with the regular podcast next week on Friday, as always. So tune in for that, and we'll talk and, about uh, probably Poseidon Rex next week. Yeah, right, I was going to say we we changed that because we were originally going to do a full episode on Zombievers, but we wanted the point five action to get it to you sooner. So we will be checking out Poseidon Rex. Is that available on Netflix? I don't know, Tony. We'll figure Let it out. Find out. We what? are entering into schlock month right now, so we're kind of like we're getting into asylum movies. We're getting into a lot of different stuff. Zombievers is kind of a precursor since it's still March when this comes out. But yeah, we're going to be reviewing some stuff that's going to hurt me and it's going to tickle Al. I don't know about that. <laughs> My my tolerance is higher, but you're still going to find one that really hurts me, I think. You think? I bet one of them will. Poseidon Rex sounds so absurd that I might be able to enjoy it. Poseidon Rex is unfortunately not on Netflix. Oh, so, we'll find a way. Boo. Life We're watching a the bad movie, so you don't have to. Hey, Ann McDaniels <laughs> is in this. You got his, like, T-Rex, but he's in the water. Anyway, that's a different that just show. like a large alligator? Ah. <laughs> <sighs> Anyway, you guys have an awesome week. We will see you with more. I uh, yeah, check out the video podcast on YouTube. 
Just uh, check out all of our other content at humanechoes.com. On the right-hand side, there is a donate button. If you feel this was worth a dollar, worth five bucks, we would greatly, greatly appreciate it. You can also check out all of our other content, discussions, all sorts of cool stuff over there on the website, humanechoes.com. Thanks for listening, guys. You're the best. Bye. Bye.